When man plotted evil against me, he thought he got the best of me. But what he didn't know was I am protected. What he didn't know was God had me. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for what you done for me. You pulled me up out of misery. Yes, you did. Thank you, Father, for rescuing me, for being there, yeah, when no one seemed to care. Yes, so I Thank you, oh, thank you for blessing me, yes, for walking with me, for being my soldier, fighting these battles, oh, Thank you, Father, yes. Thank you, Father, yes. Thank you for everything you did for me. Yes, sometimes you got to praise the Lord. And whatever's in your spirit, you just belt it out. If you want to sing, you sing. If you want to speak, you speak. If you want to give prophecy over yourself or over those that are around you, then you do that according to the will of the Lord. I am Nicole. Thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. We are walking with the Lord this day. We are grateful for his mercy. We are grateful for his faithfulness. We are grateful for the love that he has put upon us. No, we are not always talking about the problems, but we're also talking about the solutions. No, we are not always in the Bible, but sometimes we've got to come up out the Bible and we've got to allow the words that we have heard to resonate with us and so that we can teach others. You've been listening to YouTube NM Enterprise 7. For some of you all for quite some time, thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your encouragement. Thank you for your love and for your generosity. Thank you and thank you some more. This message I dedicate to those who I keep seeing in the comment sections. <laughs> I dedicate this message to those who have been struggling for a long time with all sorts of things, but yet you are still faithful to the calling. You know that those thorns in your flesh are not there for always. You know that there is a crown of life after this life. Be encouraged knowing that God got you, <laughs> you know, that he has your back. Just know that you are going to get through every situation. It doesn't matter what it is. Sometimes we get so caught up in the trouble that we forget. We forget that God is with us every step of the way. So today is not a message that is about the problems, right? But is about the solutions. And it's to encourage you and remind you of God's divine, his holy, his awesome protection as you continue to walk this walk. Why does one need protection? Well, because there is those out there that want to do harm. There are those that do not mean us believers well. So 
We need God's protection, his spiritual armor, so that we can be able to go into atmospheres and do battle with seen as well as unseen forces. You see, some people are in dangerous relationships. Some people are living in dangerous communities. Some people are doing some dangerous work. Not everybody's life is routine. Not everybody's life uh, is free of adversity and challenges and trials. There are those in the Christian walk that are on dangerous paths and God has put them there. I know that for some people, it hurts them to know that God would do that to their loved one. I wish that he would stop working that dangerous job. I wish that she would stop being with that dangerous man. I wish that he would move up out of that dangerous land. But sometimes those things are there to keep us on our knees. Sometimes those things are there to preserve, to teach some folks perseverance. Other times they are there temporarily so that the individual who's in, in it will be broken down so much to the point where all they can do is just call on the father because some folks are in dangerous situations because they're unbelievers because they don't trust in the Lord and others trust in the Lord, but they're not ready to come up out of their situations. And for others, the opportunity is just not there yet. Okay. So God's divine protection, let us pray. Let's pray right now in the name of the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit for God's divine protection to fall upon those individuals who are suffering much, who are challenged, who have a lot going on mentally, physically, and spiritually. I pray in Jesus' name that you will just uproot them up out of these dangerous predicaments and situations and lands and so forth. I pray in Jesus' mighty name, though, that as long as they are there, that they are learning and growing in you and drawing near to you, that you will continue to put your loving arms around them and that whatever might happen, that it will be for your glory, good as well as bad. I pray these things in Jesus mighty name. Let the angels of the Lord go forth right now, wherever the listener's loved one is, or if he or she is in a dangerous situation right now. Angels go forth. Angels go forth in Jesus mighty name. Protection angels right now for my family, for the listeners family. Protection angels right now go forth. Go forth. Warring angels go forth in the courtrooms. Warring angels go forth in the bedrooms, in the backyards, in the workplace. Warring angels go forth in the churches in Jesus mighty name. The angels, Lord, of protection those that you have divinely called to that one who is in need. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Psalm 4, 8. I will both lie down in peace and sleep. Sleep tonight. Sleep. Some folks haven't gotten sleep in a long time. Sleep. Sleep. Utilize the music that is out there. Look it up on YouTube. Music to help you go to sleep. Nothing wrong with it. Okay. I will both lie down in peace and sleep for you alone. O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Some folks, you have safety right around the corner. It's just you have not asked the Lord for an exit plan. So ask the Lord for an exit plan so that you can be safe. I'm asking in Jesus name that if I need an exit plan, that the Lord will provide me with one too. <laughs> Hallelujah and praise the Lord. Because you never know. It may not be today. It may not be next week. It may not be next year. It may not be for another five, ten years. But you, we never know when we might need an exit plan. Because we never know who might be that enemy. That one that we least expect. Psalm 34, 7 says, The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. The angel of the Lord does it. The angel of the Lord does it. The angel of the Lord does it. Okay? But it's to those who fear him and delivers, delivers, delivers them. We're looking for deliverance, not band-aids, not temporary fixes. 
thank you jesus psalm ninety one one two he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty i will say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress my god in him i will trust bad marriage i'm trusting in god bad opportunity i'm still trusting in god bad relatives i'm trusting in god bad place to live i'm trusting in god I'm trusting in God with my health. I'm trusting in God with my children. I'm trusting in God with my wealth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I need God's protection over my finances. I need God's protection over my household. I need God's protection over my family and my friends. God's protection. I don't need the police as much as I need God. <laughs> Come on now. Some of you all, you know how this works. You know what it takes, right? You've been at this thing long enough to know that sometimes we've got to press in. We've got to press in spiritual breakthrough. Come on. The anointing of God come fall fresh on me. A renewing of your mind, your body, your spirit. You've been sitting down, sitting quiet, wrapped up in television, wrapped up in the Internet, running to jobs and running to, you know, athletic sports and so forth, trying to get away from the truth. And the truth is, is that God is calling you back to him. Because he wants to protect you. Because he knows what's about to happen. He knows what's going to happen in the future. He knows what's going to happen in these households that we live in. Some of them are old. He knows. You don't know. You think you know. But you don't know. Some folks, they sense that something's about to happen. That's why they go and they spend the necessary money to get things fixed on a house. To get things fixed on a car. To get things fixed in an atmosphere. Because they know, uh-uh, a long time now, this mechanic's been telling me. A long time now, this maintenance guy has been saying. A long time now, this contractor's been warning me. I better get it done. I better get it done. Some of you all, I'm triggering something right now by even saying that. You know. Because if you don't get it done, you know what the end result's going to be. How many times people got to keep telling you the same old, same old? Get the right tires for your vehicle. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. When's the last time you got a checkup? Uh-oh. A checkup on your vehicle, a checkup with you. Come on. God's divine protection. Protecting you from what? From what's ahead. What does life insurance do? What does uh, rental insurance do? What does health insurance do? Preventative maintenance. Let us think about it in those uh, in that point of view. Right. Preventative maintenance. If I'm taking care of some things as I'm seeing them falling apart or what have you, at least they won't be so bad. Right. If I just ignore them. Jesus, he who dwells in the secret place of the most high. What shall abide under the shadow of the almighty? All right, I already read that scripture. I'm moving on to Isaiah 59, 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. Uh-huh. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. The spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him because you know the enemy going to come right now. Today, we're praising the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're encouraged. We are feeling good, right? In the spirit of the Lord. But you know, the enemy's sitting back and he's saying all that praising and worshiping the Lord. Here we go. Here we go, Lord. What can I do now? What can I do next? Mm -hmm. Jesus, Jesus, prepare us for what's ahead. Lord, you know, you know what's going to come through that phone. You know what we're going to see over the Internet. You know, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know what that child's going to bring us. Jesus. You know what that relative from afar is going to say to us. Jesus. In advance, you already know where sickness is. You know where the germs are. Jesus. Protect us. Protect us. Protect our spirit, our inner man, right? So that we don't fall apart. So that we don't end up having altars fight our battles right because you know that psychologists know full well that uh people will come up with a various personalities when they can't take stuff and in those personalities they only work for so long before another personality shows up and another and another and then we end up losing out on the core of the person of who they truly are okay so you want god's protection over your mind over your mind. The enemy likes to mess with people's minds. You know, he likes to take you and confuse you and lie to you and use you 
and say that what you know isn't what you know and what you see isn't what you see. He moves on people to do the same thing. And you've got some around you like, I didn't even think he was that smart to come up with this. Yep. Yep. Because the enemy. Okay. I didn't think that she would have the nerve to do that. Uh, influenced by the enemy. There's all sorts of influences. They come in all sorts of ways, all sorts of mediums. And that's another thing. You got to protect your mind, guard your heart from that sort of stuff. That's on television. That's on the Internet. That's um, out there, you know, um, amongst family members and friends and workers and so forth. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. Psalm 27, 1 uh, through, uh, and 5. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 10, 29 through 31 are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear. Therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. Right. You are of value. Somebody said you're not. Somebody was cussing and saying some stuff that made you angry, you know, lowered your self-esteem. But God says you're valued. I say you're valued in Jesus name. Right. So why are we fearing man? Why are we fearing woman and what they say? I had somebody say to me um, some months back, they said to me, they said, aren't you concerned about what this one said? You should be. And I, I had to catch myself before I knew it, though. I didn't care uh, where I was. I said, Jesus. <laughs> I looked at her. I said, Jesus. I said, now I've been walking with Jesus. I don't have to be concerned about what she says or what this one thinks. Jesus, you see, some people, they want you to be fearful. Why? Because the enemy puts them up to be in that way about situations that they go through. So they put their fear upon you. At least that's what they think. But I don't receive it in Jesus name. Just because you're worried about what this one think and what that one think. That's not me. I don't lose sleep, sweetie. You got the wrong one. You take all your worries, your fears, and your frustrations, and your upset, and you deal with somebody that's like you, because I'm not that person. Jesus. Deuteronomy 33, 27, the eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. He will thrust out the enemy from before you and will say, destroy. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on. Some of you all, let me read that again, because see, you, you know, you can sense you feel it, the dark energy, Satan, evil, whatever you want to call it. The eternal God is your refuge. Eternal God. Did I say that? Yes, I said it. Eternal God. Not make believe, not made up. You really believe that? Yes, I do. The eternal God is your refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms. He will thrust out. I like that. He will thrust out the enemy from before you and will say, destroy. I know that's heavy for some of you all because <laughs> you might be living with the enemy. You might be in love with that enemy. You might be coddling that enemy. That enemy might be somebody that you birthed in this world. That enemy might be somebody that birthed you. And you mean to tell me that God will thrust out the enemy from before me and will say destroy? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh-oh. For some folks that have that compassion in heart, right? That conscience. I don't think I want God to destroy, <laughs> right? Uh-huh. But we'll see what God says about all that. All right. Proverbs 133. See, that's the kind of God I serve. If you're listening to YouTube NM Enterprise 7, let me tell you, you're at the right place because we don't serve a weak God. We don't serve one of them gods that's uh, sticks and stones. We don't serve one of them gods that's dressed in all black. We don't serve one of them gods where you burn candles and you will hope for money. No, we serve that God that a lot of folks 
don't like because he has another side to him that's about revenge and war. Okay, yeah, well, that's the one I serve. That Old Testament God, he hasn't gone anywhere. Right. And so I give all praise and honor to him, you know, and everybody that wants to come up with this story and that story. Well, that's on them. OK, about this God and that God and who has been there for them. That's their choice. I'm just saying who I go to, the eternal God. And we believe in him. We trust in him as believers. OK, Proverbs 133, whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil. That's what he says. And I'm going to believe it. Using Solomon, I'm 10 years ago. And all these other writers in the Bible, whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil. I'm not fearing evil. Why? Because I know that I'm dwelling safely. I'm secure. Would who? Your husband? No. Would who? Your mother? No. Would who? Your children? No. Would God? Would God? Do you really think that I'm going to be feeling secure and safe with folks who's flawed? No, if anything, I'm guarded. I'm guarded. Yes, I love them. Yes, I'm going to be there for them as much as I possibly can. But nah, I'm not trusting in them. I'm trusting in God. He's been fighting my battles. Long before that man came around, long before those kids showed up, it was me and God. And long after, uh, it'll be me and God. I want that crown of life. I don't know about you saying, thank you, Jesus. So, you got the message right here. Be encouraged. This is for my mature, dedicated listeners. Okay? Those that are wanting to fight the good fight. Those that's been at it for a long time. Those that's still suffering. We, I'm suffering too. Okay? <laughs> We're not sugarcoating anything. That's why we pray like we pray. That's why we praise the Lord like we do. And if you're not used to this, uh, this kind of speech, then I suggest you get on board. Because every now and again, I'm going to show up and show out talking about Jesus and scriptures and everything else. It's not going to always be about wisdom. It's going to be about God and his word and what he wants to say to us through his word. Okay. Some folks just want to hear wisdom without the scriptures and without God and all of that. Uh, we can't always talk like that. OK, so I thank you, as always, for listening to God be the glory. Please do check the description box for anything related to your situation. Also, you've been listening to YouTube NM Enterprise 7. Please subscribe today. And if you haven't given, please do. We greatly appreciate it. Once again, to God be the glory.